Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to uh, show you how you can integrate a QT into the Yocto project. Anytime we talk about the GUI, basically uh, QT program came to our mind. So we can develop some QT GUI using the uh, PC and then we can compile the same GUI and same program uh, using the Yocto and then we can integrate it into our uh, Linux image. But before that, I'm going to show you how we can integrate a simple C program into the Yocto project. So let's get started. To do that, let's uh, uh, design a simple program in C uh, in our Ubuntu uh, system. So I create a um, folder name, call it my C program or my C app. Okay. So we need a file uh, with the dot C. So call it my C app dot C. Oops. Okay. I write a very simple program include stdio.h. I'm going to print hello world. So I void main void and then I will go to print f hello world. Don't forget semicolon and save the program. Uh, just simple program. So if I'm using the GCC to compile the file, my C program dash output, same before my C app, for example. Oh, sharp include. Did I forget it? Really? Okay, it's done. As soon as I call this program, uh, it just print hello world on the terminal. So <clears throat> I highly recommend you first uh, debug your code in your PC. And after that, then when, when, when you see it's working really fine, then go for integrating to the Yocto project. So the next step is to create a meta layer for ourselves and then add our resources and recipes into the, our uh, meta layers. So I will open up a new terminal. First, I have to set the environment and then say bitbake dash layer create dash layer uh, i call it meta dash shahim i can go to the pocket to show you where it will be done so right now we are in the build directory but it's it's good to have all the meta layers into the pocket directory <clears throat> so just go back and then create this one bit bake layer Oh, bit big liars. Mm -hmm. So you see that a meta layer is created for us uh, with the example recipe. So in the next step, I have to add uh, this meta layer into the bblayers.com. So I have to say bitbake dash layers add dash layer and the name of the layer or meta layer. Okay, I have to 
because right now we are in the build directory, so but we are in the pocky, so I have to use um, go back and then add the correct meta layer. Okay, if I'm going to the build, go into the con DB layers. As you can see, our new meta layer is added in here. So in the next step, you have to add the C program and create a, a recipe file for that. So uh, you will go to your um, layer, create a new folder. The first part should be same as here, recipe dash. It can be anything here. I call it software. If you go to the conf and layers, you see that uh, uh, in the layer, anything that has start with the recipe, uh, it will be uh, known as some recipe uh, pass and it will work for you. So I, I will go to the recipe software. I will create a folder in here, call it my C application. Inside of here, you have to create your recipe file. There's an example. You can use uh, the example uh, from here, or you can start from a scratch and create your own one. I copy this one, go back to my own recipe, paste it. Change the name, change its name to my desired one. I call it my C app. Let's and then underline the version. I will open it up. You can remove most of them. No need. So license. Uh, I don't need any license, so I call it closed. Summary. Uh, just say um, you can put it as a description as well. The other parameter that you have to add is section is equal to examples. Then you have to add your resource file. So you have to create a new folder on the same, just nearby the recipe and call it files. And inside the files, all your um, C program should be added in here. I will add my C program into the files and call it src underline URI. And the address of your file my c app dot c right now we have only one input one file so you can put it in a same line then you have to set your working directory And here, Yocto project should know what should be done during the compilation and in installation process. Do underline compile. In here, I can say that, I can tell that my compiler CC, and here, the name of my C file, the output file, the output file could be the same. 
and what should be done for the install install dash d the root and here you can say uh, bin directory or anywhere that you would prefer to be installed install dash m0775 my c app same as before so this time when the yocto compile your uh, code it will install it and put it into this directory uh, into the bin directory under the user and bin and it's pretty it i will save that and i will go to my yocto project and i go to my terminal and call bitpage so instead of compiling the whole image we can just compile this recipe my c app just to make sure that it is working correctly before uh, packing into the image kernel so i just call bitpeg and my recipe name so you see that do populate do configure to compile everything that was written inside this uh, recipe was done here um, one by one So you can see that it is successfully compiled without any errors. Before adding compiling the image, we have to ask Bitbake to add or populate this recipe into the kernel. To do that, we go to the build, we go to the conf and local conf. Somewhere around here, we will add image install append and the name of the recipe my c app so so this time when the bitpeg read the local conf file uh, it will understand that uh, it should add my c app into the kernel image so i will save this file i will open up a terminal and say bit page tisdk dash base dash image hit enter okay it's done but it gives me some errors but they are not really serious error because it said that you are going backward in some of the packages uh because uh, previously i've working uh in uh with some of the newer versions but this time i'm going backward so it's not a big deal for this time but in order to avoid these kind of errors you can go to the build directory and remove the entire attempt directory. I mean, uh, uh, make sure that you are not deleting the SSH cache uh, because any every time when the Yocto project uh, come up, it will read the SSH cache and uh, use the this file if we have something uh, pre compiled there, but the temp directory can be deleted. Let's 
uh, ignore that and go to the temp, go to the deploy, go to the images, go to the, our image, modify it by time. Okay, this is the newest one. Okay, everything looks good. Let's copy the VIG file. I will copy this one and then paste it on the desktop. And also I open up a new terminal. So right now it is zip file. So I use on XZ and then the name of the file. So in unzip this file and create a VIG file for us. Okay, VIG file. In the next step, I will add the SD card into my PC. Virtual machine. Okay. If I open up the disk, it is an empty space. SC card. So I have to burn this big file into the SC card. If you remember, I use a sudo dd input file is equal to my big file. And the output file would be dev sdb and bunch of parameters, my password. Let's see the size of this big file. It's around 350 meg. It's done. So if I open up the disk app again and mount the partitions, we have a boot partition and root partition. That's okay. I will go to the root partition. If you remember, we install our C file into the user, into the bean. Somewhere here, I can search that my C app. Okay, it's here and uh, it is populated into our root file. So let's put our SD card into my uh, board and see. If it is working correctly in the real world or not. I will add my SD card into my uh, AMX board, connect it to the computer using the micro USB, and I will plug in the power before that i need the putty software let's open up the putty software i can bring this one down serial port com 9 and the speed would be 115 200 and after that, I will power up the device. This time should be connected to the host. Yes, and open. It's booting correctly without any problem. I mean, uh, this time I can just use the putty because I'm not showing anything graphical on the LCD, but next time when I'm going to compile the uh, Qt GUI application, I have to just show you the LCD because it basically show up on the LCD. So root. Right now I am in the home root, so I have to go back and back go to the user, go to the bin, 
And here I have to look for my app, my C app file. I hit enter and working correctly. It just prints something for, my, uh, for me. And then just let's cover it off. So in the next step, I have to uh, create a app using the Qt and then integrate it into the uh, Yocto project. So let's get rid of these two files. This time I call it my Qt app. Oops. So for the Qt, we need a CPP file and dot PRO, which is the project file. Let's call it my Qt app dot CP, CPP and touch it. And the other one would be my project file. my qt app dot project so i can start from my qt app dot cpp and create a very simple qt file program and create a i can start with uh, the CPP file and create a very simple program. Same as before, we have to include some libraries. Include Q application. Uh, I need a window and a label just to show up if everything is uh, working correctly or not. I need a main function. It has two inputs, argument, Some simple programming, Q application. Q label, and we have a label which will print us at the center of the screen. Hello world. And the title of the window would be my first QT. I have to resize the window as well. Because my LCD is small, I can go for a hundred, hundred, but we can change it later. And then hollow dot show.
I will save this file. Then I will go to this uh, project file, open it up. For the target, I have to set my file, my Qt app. Qt dependency is GUI and widget. My input file, my qt app.cpp. Save it. Hope everything is okay. I will open up a new terminal. To compile this one, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you have to make sure that these, uh, your file are working correctly in your PC. And after that, if they are working correctly, uh, it's time to go for uh, integrating into the Yocto project. Right now, just let's see if it is working correctly. I use QMake. So QMake create a uh, make file for us, and then I can easily say make. It said failed. Let's see my CPP file. So easy, Q application. And from here, I have to use sources. Everything looks good now. So we have uh, my executable file, my Qt app. Hit the run button. Yeah, it's working correctly. I have a label at the middle and it just prints something on the label. So in the next step, I have to add these um, Qt file into the Yocto project. So same as before, I will copy my CPP file and project file, go back to the Pocky, uh, go to our meta layer, go to our recipe, and here I will create a new file, my Qt app this time, create a folder to add our resources, with name is files, add our resources, dot project file and dot cpp file. This time I need a recipe file. Let me copy this one and I will modify this one based on the Qt requirement, my Qt app. Let's open it up. So this time we have to apply some changes here. First, the summary, this is the Qt program description. This is the Qt program. So section, uh, here there's no need for a section. So resources, under resources we have two files. If I'm going to the file, my Qt, uh, app.cpp and my qt app dot, uh, project. I will add these two. My qt app.cpp 
two lines file my qt app dot project so working directory is correct do compile and do install so let's just start from here so basically we are using the i mean this program should be installed based on the qt so so this program is based on the Qt, so it's dependent on the Qt base. So before uh, compiling this program, Qt base should be compiled. So we can say the hands Qt base. And this program is going to display some GUI on the LCD. So we have to add the Wayland as well. Remember that how we compile these uh, CPP and Pro, we open up a terminal and use QMake to read this project file and create a make file for us. So similarly, we can inherit QMake5 so in that case when we inherit qmake5 uh, it just do all the compilation process for us so we don't need the do compiles here in addition in also do some installation process for us as well this qt qmake so instead of doing do install we can do install append so uh, when the QMake compile and install it, after an installation process, this line will be run for us. So similarly, we will install dash D pin directory, dash M, uh, my Qt app, and then the pin directory, it's okay. And also we have to add, files package name dollar bin dir slash my qt app so this line basically register for the root file system aggregation so you have to add this one as well and that's everything for here i will save this one I have to just double check everything before going forward, go to the build, go to the conf, local. So we have to add this feature into the image, call it this troll on the line features underline append. Valen and image install append. So Qt base should be added. Qt Valen as well. And also core image extra install Raylan and what and Western. So let's explain this one. Wayland is a protocol that um, I provided also a website to do that. So, so Wayland is a protocol that is specify communication between the display server and its client. And Watson is the implementation of the Wayland. So Wayland is a protocol, a standard, and Watson is the implementation of this. 
uh, protocol. So we have to add the what Veston as well. I will save this one and hopefully we are ready to go. I mean, this setting is came from our previous lecture, which we implement the Linux for the AM3352. Uh, so same as before, I will write bitpeg uh, TISTK base image. I will hit the enter. Remember that this time we added the Qt base and Wayland. If it is the very first time, it probably takes around an hour or two, it's depend on your PC. So give me some error. Do fetch. There should be, okay. It said that I cannot find this file. So I will come back and Correct this one onto the Meta Shahim software Qt app dot project. Okay, it should be good for now. You see, it is compiling my Qt app. Do compile. It's based on the this inherit QMake. Do install, do populate. Looks everything is working correctly. Okay, successfully done. I have to go to the Pocky, go to the build, go to the temp deploy images and my image file. I modify it based on the time and looking for my VIG file. I just copy this one and paste it on the desktop. And use on XZ to extract it. So when it's done, same as before, sudo dd input file here and the output file, sd dev sdb and some parameters, it enter. This time, if I mount the partitions, if I'm going to the root partition, go to the user, go to the bin, here I have to find my files. My C app and also my Qt app, both of them are here and they are ready to go. So I go, I'm going to connect the board and let's see what we will see so i can show you the board okay and i will turn it on go to the host and at the same time we will see here I will show you a bigger picture afterward. Just <clears throat> let's see how everything is look like right now. Uh, and the small picture, you will see that the TI logo is running. And we will see the how the booting processes look like. Okay, it's running. If I'm with the root. It is going to the root. Let's have a bigger view of the board right now. And yeah, 
you see that our UI is kind of appear here. We have a time, we have a, let's connect my mouse to this board and let's see what will happen. I just connect it through this USB connector. And yeah, I have a mouse as well. I can open up this little terminal. Previously, if you remember at, and the, on the top, it said that Valen terminal. If you remember from the previous time, we actually uh, have a kind of uh, terminal shape uh, output on the LCD, but this time we have an actual UI because we actually imported the Valent uh, protocol and the uh, Veston as well. So let's uh, open up. Right now we are at, at the PWD, we are at the home root. We will use CD back, back. So LS, we will go to the user CD USR and then CD bin. Here, if you remember, we had two files, my C app, I hit the enter, it just prints something uh, on the terminal. And then we can also open up our Qt app, my Qt app as well, I hit the enter. As soon as I hit the enter, Oh, you will see that there's a small uh, pop-up windows come up on my LCD. Let's go back to the big picture. You, you see that this is the uh, hello world that we have designed. I can connect the mouse once more. Okay, we have the mouse and yeah, this is our first QD program on the AM export, AM 33.5 export easily. So there's another simple note that I would like to share with you. Sometimes the UI doesn't show up and this is because the Veston doesn't uh, automatically run. You have to apply some initial setting. Uh, you have to say mkdir-p tmp dollar user dash veston hit the enter ch mode zero seven hundred temp tmp dollar user dash this ton it enter export x dg on the line runtime on the line dir is equal to t m p slash dollar user dash veston it enter and veston dash dash tty equal to one dash dash Backend equal to FB dev dash back and dot SO space and hit the enter. And just a reboot. After that, there is no need to repeat this process again. And after that, you have a normal uh, UI interface coming up. Yeah, that's everything for today. Thank you very much for your watching.